Everybody stand on your feet and worship God this morning. You are the one, my, my heart adores. Say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. love on Jesus for I don't know how many of you guys love Jesus because you woke up this morning somebody didn't wake up this morning but you're here his presence let's sing that again without the musician we don't need musicians to tell God how much we love him 
to love on Jesus. We're going to sing, Jesus, I love you. Make it personal for each and every single one of you. Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. You are the one, my, my heart adores. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. You're the one that my heart adores. Hallelujah. My heart adores. Sing, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love you. Hallelujah. You are the one. My heart. in the place let's just worship the Lord he is worthy to be worshiped this morning how many of you are grateful this morning you woke up in, in your right mind how many of you this morning you you are grateful that you you were able to dress yourself how many of you this morning you you woke up and, and you are grateful that you were able to brush your own teeth and and and, and do oh God oh how many of you this morning you you are grateful people this morning if you're here, you are a grateful person. Can, can, you just, can you just worship the Lord? Open your mouth and, and, and let the Lord know how much you love him today. I know I love the Lord today more than I loved him five seconds ago. More than I loved him yesterday. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. 
Come on, everybody in the place. I want to hear you worship. Worship the Lord. Open your mouth and worship. Open your mouth and worship the Lord. Every eyes closed, every hands lifted, and just worship the Lord this morning. He is worthy to be worshipped. He is worthy. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him hallelujahs this morning. Give him your hallelujahs this morning. Give him your highest praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy. You are worthy, oh God, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy, oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus, we bless your name, we bless your name. We honor you today, Lord, we honor you, oh God. We are grateful today, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for Calvary, oh God. Thank you. Thank you for the blood that was shed, oh God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for saving our lives, oh God. Thank you for saving our lives for, for, for an eternity from hell, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for reaching out and grab us, oh God. When we were going straight to hell, Lord, you, you send your son, oh God, to die, oh God. So we, we, don't, we don't suffer, oh God, that, that, that faith, Lord God. So we thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you this morning, oh God. Father, we just, oh God, we just want to bask in your presence. Thank you for showing up once again, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are here, oh God, and you are moving in this place, oh God. You are ready, oh God, to, to touch somebody this morning, oh God. You are ready this morning, oh God, to heal somebody, oh God. You are ready, oh God, to encourage somebody, Lord God. Somebody that came in here weak, oh God, don't know what to do and where to go, Lord God. You are ready to encourage them this morning, oh God. So, Father God, prepare our hearts, oh God. Hallelujah. Help us today, oh God. Help us today, Lord. We need you, oh God. We need more of you. More of you in our lives, oh God, and less of us, oh God. We need you. We need your presence, oh God. Holy Spirit, fill this place, oh God. Holy Spirit, fill each and every one of us this morning, oh God. Holy Spirit, do a work in us. Do a work in our hearts. Do a work in us, oh God. Do a work in us, oh God. Make us more like Jesus today, oh God. Make us more like Jesus today, oh God. We need you, we need you, we need you. Hallelujah. How many of you need the Lord this morning? Come on.
your name, O oh God. We exalt your name, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Listen, I, I've been in basketball games where people are clapping for a, a, a basketball player, their favorite player. I've been, I've been to, to a football match where people are clapping for a football player. Listen, if it was Tom Brady that walked in here, those of you from New England, this is not the way you will clap. Now I'm telling you to clap for the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one that reigns above all, the one that created the universe, the one that created you, the one that keeps you alive, the one that keeps you from being, from, from being attacked by the devil, the one that keeps you each and every day. Come on, clap for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You worship you, we worship you. We worship you, Lord, we glorify you. We exalt the name of the Lord to say, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, one more time, one more time. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So good to see all your beautiful faces. Listen, this morning, before you guys sit down, I, I, want, I want you all to like move from where you're sitting. Say hello to somebody you didn't walk into church with. If you don't know them, ask them for their names. That's your brother, that's your sister. Greet them in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be said. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Yeah, so good to see everybody. And you guys, you guys braved the, the weather outside and what a, what a mess. 
So, and it's going to rain all day. So, listen, just, just act like it's sunny outside. In here it is sunny. Look, look how bright it is. <laughs> Praise God. So good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always good to be in the house of God. And um, <clears throat> right now we're going we're gonna to go ahead and worship the Lord in our giving. Uh, giving is, is part of our worship as we teach every Sunday. It's always, always part of our worship. Um, and, and I often allude to uh, the, the people in the Old Testament and, and, and back, in, and, and back in, in even before the Old Testament, even before that, um, tithing was, was, was something that was there before that you could think about. It, it was there before even Abraham. So, so tithing is something that, is, that, 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 that we, need to, we need to bring into the storehouse, as it says in Malachi, so that, so that there will always be provision in the house of God. And, and, and I invite you to come and give and, and give. The Bible says give joyfully. And when you give joyfully, listen, you'll never regret it because no one can outgive God. No one can outgive my God. So this morning, as I invite you to come and bring your offering, I, I want to remind you that every time you give, you give to a church. Listen, don't, don't put in your mind that, you know what, I'm giving to a pastor. Listen, the church doesn't belong to the pastor. It belongs to God. It belongs to God, God Almighty, because he instituted the church. Without, it, without that, without him doing it, listen, we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be able to be who we are, what we do. So, and as you give, I, I want to let you know, those watching us, I want you to know that when you give to this congregation, you give not just to, to keep this place to this place going, but you also give to our missionaries that the missionaries that we support. So those of you that would never, never like say you're going on a mission trip and you're like, you know what, I this is not this is not my thing, but but you want to bless other people. Listen, when you give here, it goes to missionaries. It takes care of the bill of this place so it stays open. So I'm inviting you this morning to give joyfully with all your heart. And and I promise you. I prompt, no, I guarantee you that God will bless you in return. And that's what he says in his word, that he will bless you in return. Amen? All right, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify you. We exalt you. Thank you, O oh God, for this time of worship, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, that we, we were able to come in this place, O oh God. Thank you for, O oh God, heat. Oh God, thank you, oh God, for, for light. Thank you, oh God, for everything, oh God, that you will allow us to be able to do, oh God, because your people give. Because of their giving, Lord God, we're able to maintain this place. Because of your giving, oh God, we're able to support people in Haiti. We're able to support, oh God, other missionaries in other parts of the world, oh God. So Father God, we pray this morning, oh God, that you will bless this offering. We pray, oh God, that you will bless every single person that put their hand in that basket, Lord God. I pray, oh God, God, your blessing over the lives, oh God. I, I pray, oh God, that you will bless them a hundredfold. That's your promise to us, oh God. So all I'm saying is repeating what you have already promised us, oh God. So Father God, I pray this morning, oh God, as we as we come and, and, and we give to you, Lord God, bless this offering. Let it, oh God, oh God, go further than we could ever ever imagine or think lord god so father god oh god we pray this morning lord god that you will have your way oh god in this place oh god as we continue with the meeting oh god the word that's about to be spoken oh god father we pray that you will use oh god oh, oh god our pastor oh god as she bring as she bring the word oh god let let these words oh god that she will bring oh god will 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 serve us oh god will strengthen us will encourage us oh god so father god i pray oh god that you will use her oh god mightily for your glory and your honor, Lord God. Father, we thank you, oh God. Oh God, bless our time together. Bless, oh God, whatever that we do today, whatever that we're going to continue to do, Lord God. Let it be, oh God, just what needed to be done. Whatever word that's going to be said, let it be just what we needed to hear, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you, oh God. Bless the offering, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. The church say, amen. The worship team going to lead us in a song. You guys stand up and bring your offering to God this morning. Could make
Lord, this morning, show him that you love him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we love you. We love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you, are you guys ready for some good food? <laughs> Praise God. Are you, ready? are you guys ready for some good food? All right, all right. I'm going to ask again. Are you guys ready for some good food? Amen. All right, so this morning, I have the pleasure to introduce to you my sister's sister. She's my sister, she's my pastor, she's my friend, and um, this morning we have the pleasure to, to have her share 
something from from God for something to uh, like that God has entrusted to her to us and um, this is a long time coming so I'm happy I'm gonna sit down and and just receive whatever God is gonna use her to share to to the church and just before she does um, let's just let's just pray father we just thank you this morning we thank you for your presence in this place we thank you oh God for everything that we're able to do so far Lord God and Father, at this time, Lord, we, we come to you and, Lord, we, we don't want to hear, oh God, a person, but we want to hear you speaking through us, oh God, since since you chose, oh God, to use us, oh God, you chose to, oh God, not just come and, and, and speak to us directly, but you you used each and every one of us, oh God, in you know, some way, shape, or form to speak your word to each other, Lord God. So, Father, right now, as my sister stand here, oh God, Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will move in her, oh God, let every word that she speak, oh God, will be just what we need it will let every word that she speak oh god will oh god minister to our hearts oh god will will oh god will come out here oh god no surely surely we have heard from the lord so father use her lord god for your glory for your honor lord god we pray oh god in jesus mighty name and the church say and the church say amen, amen. all right everybody put your hand together for the holy spirit in my sister's life Amen. Do you love Jesus this morning? Do you love Jesus this morning? Amen. Amen. I thank God for this privilege. And, um, when my brother asked me to preach today, I was thinking, praying, and I thought God gave me a message for you. Then the other day, he changed it. Since it's Thanksgiving week, I want to speak on the subject, Thanksgiving for the Lord's goodness. Amen? Thanksgiving for the Lord's goodness. And... Um, I'm going to read just one verse from Psalm 118. Psalm 118, verse 1. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. You want to say that with me? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. We love to worship with that song. It's a song that Matt Redman wrote. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I'll worship your holy name. And the verse says, the sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. He says you reach in love and you slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing 10,000 reasons for my heart to find. Amen? 10,000 reasons for my heart to find. Someone says, if the giving of thanks is a vaccine, we would not need protection. No. He says, who would not need protection against spiritual infection. If the giving of thanks is a vaccine, who would not need protection against spiritual infection? Thanksgiving and praise always go together. We cannot praise and worship God without also being thankful. Amen? 
When we have a thankful heart, it's easier for us to worship. It's easier for us to give praise. And in our text, the psalmist reveals several things about thanksgiving. First, he pointed out its object. Give thanks to the Lord. Let's say it again. Give thanks to the Lord. And James, in the chapter 1, verse 17, said, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. God owns all things. Everything, every single thing belongs to God. Second, the psalmist saw, showed the reason, the reason why we need to be thankful. He says, for he is good. Amen? Give thanks to the Lord. That is the object. And now the reason is because he is good. The abundance of God's blessings flows naturally out of his graciousness. Flows out of the graciousness of his character. Third, the psalmist reveals its motivation. He says, his love endures forever. And throughout the psalm, you will see that note. His love endures forever. Now, what about Thanksgiving? This is Thanksgiving week, right? So Thanksgiving is a gratitude from is, it's like, it's a gift, okay? It's a gift from the Lord. Like all gifts, we can take it or leave it. When something is given to you, you can be, be appreciative, take it, or just leave it there. So gratitude is a gift from the Lord. We can use it or we can neglect it. In this as in all good things, we have a stewardship. We have a responsibility. Our responsibility is to be grateful. Amen? Our stewardship of thanksgiving must be constant. It's not something that you do today and then forget about it tomorrow. It must be constant. It must be unvarying. We should give thanks at all times and under all circumstances. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18, the Bible says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will for you and I is for us to give thanks, is for us to be grateful and in all circumstances. This Thanksgiving week, I will encourage each and every one of you to put Paul's word to the test. Give thanks. Amen? Give thanks. Let's put that word to the test so we can demonstrate its power to ourselves. Let's be thankful for the food that is served to us. Some people just eat and they don't take the time to thank the Lord. They don't take the time to reflect on those that cannot or that can eat but don't have the food to eat. Amen? So we need to be thankful for that. We need to be thankful for the preacher that brings us a message. We need to be thankful. We need to be thankful, young people, for the teacher that teaches us in class. We need to be thankful for them. We need to be thankful for anyone, for the person who does something for us. We need to be thankful. And this will change everything around us. When we're thankful, the atmosphere changes. Everything changes. Now, why should we not be constant in expressing our thanks to one another? I encourage you to do, to do it, and always, especially to God. Give thanks always to our God. Now, if I would ask this question, when do we give thanks? 
I said in all circumstances, right? So now let's consider some of them. In times of prosperity, amen? That's when everyone loves to give thanks. Everything is good. Everything is well. Everything is the way I like it. So I'm thankful. Yes, it's okay. In times of prosperity, we should give thanks. Listen, we are an affluent people. And our tables on, on Thursday, this coming Thursday, will reveal that. We have everything that we need. But our prosperity depends in part on the spirit in which we receive. Amen? The spirit in which we receive, our prosperity depends in part on it. Are we thankful? Are we thankful this morning? God has given us this grace. It is a grace. It is a gift. God has given, us to, given it to us. Are we using it? That's my question to you. Are we using it? Are we being thankful for our prosperity? Now, when do we give thanks? In times of adversity. Amen? Yes, in times of prosperity, but in times of adversity, we should give thanks to the Lord. Some people will say, that is the hardest of all. And it is. It is hard to give thanks. It is hard to praise God, to worship in times of adversity. But this will bless our lives. When we are thankful in times of adversity, our lives will be blessed. And it, as that will help us grow and be just like Jesus, when we are thankful, even in times of adversity. And in the Old Testament, I was reading uh, the prophet Habakkuk, and that is a very good ex example of the reason why we should give thanks in times of adversity. Listen to this. In chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, it says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. And that's the example we need to follow. We cannot just worship, just be thankful when everything is well. But in times of, of adversity, just like the prophet said, when there's no sheep in the pen, there's no cattle in the stalls, there's no grapes on the vines, we should give thanks. We should be joyful in God, our Savior. And that is thanksgiving. That is thanksgiving. It is said that when the pilgrims celebrated the first Thanksgiving, they were still in dark days. Things were not the way they were supposed to be, but yet they were thankful. Amen? They were thankful. We can have thankful hearts toward God even when we do not feel thankful for the circumstance. We can grieve and still be thankful. Amen? We can hurt and still be thankful. We can be angry at sin and still be thankful toward God. That is what the Bible calls a sacrifice of praise. Amen? We need to offer sacrifices of praise to our God. Giving thanks to God keeps our hearts in right relationship with him and saves us from harmful emotions and attitude that will rob us from the peace God wants us to experience. Have a thankful heart. Be grateful. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord in good and in bad times. 
Now, when do we give thanks to the Lord? In times of doubt, we should give thanks. This is difficult, but with God help, God's help, we can do it. It's not easy, but with the help of the Lord, yes, we can do it. No matter how dark the day, no matter how heavy the clouds, there are some things that we know for certain. Like this morning, there's no sunshine, right? It's raining outside. The weather is crazy. But guess what? We know that high above the clouds, the sun is shining. We know that high above the clouds, the sun is shining. We cannot see it, but the sun is shining. The sun is undimmed. We know that our God is there for us. Our life might be cloudy. Circumstances might not be the way that we would want them to be. But our God is there for us. So we need to give thanks to the Lord. We know that there's one who knows the way. That's why we need to be thankful. That's, how we, that's why we need to give thanks to the Lord. John said that before the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus asked Philip where they were going to buy bread to feed all the people. How are we going to buy bread to feed 5,000 people? Where? Where? 5,000 people, at least. John added, after Jesus asked that question, he said that was to prove him. When he asked the question to Philip, that was to prove Philip. For he himself, for Jesus knew what he would do. Jesus already knew what he would do. And that's why we need to thank God for the one, the only one in this universe who knows what to do. Even when we don't know what to do. We don't know what five minutes from now looks like. But Jesus knows it. And he knows what to do, no matter what the circumstance may be. Our stewardship of thanksgiving must be discerning. In Philippians 3 verse 13, Paul said, Forgetting the things which are behind. Forgetting the things which are behind. He did not mean that he wanted to forget everything. He was saying that his memory was selective. Like, I would choose what to remember to praise the Lord. Amen? Because if we're keeping the bad things in front of us, it's going to be difficult to praise God, to be thankful. But just like Paul, we need to have that selective memory. Choose what to be thankful for. He did not want to forget such things as his experience with Christ on the Damascus Road. He would not want to forget that. So even though he says he forget the things that are behind, there are things that he would never forget. And that's why he told that story again and again. He did not forget God's help in hard places. He did not forget God's guidance when he did not know which way to turn. Like Paul, our thanksgiving must be discerning. True thanksgiving remembers the best of the past. Because if we don't remember the best of the past, we will not be thankful. Because there are some dark days back there. Amen? So the true thanksgiving remembers the best of the past. And I understand when David in Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul. 
and forget not all his benefits. That was an order. He says, so I commend you to praise the Lord. So I commend you to worship the Lord. So I commend you, do not forget the benefits of the Lord because he has done great things. True thanksgiving sees the blessings of today. Amen? Not only do true thanksgiving, does it remember the best of the past, but it sees the blessings of today. The blessings of the present. The blessings of this moment. I understand we're living in times of uncertainty. We're living in times of confusion. We're living in times of war, of conflict, injustice, evil. These are not good times. But instead of complaining to God, we should say, or complaining to one another, or to ourselves, we should say, what a day to be alive. What a grace to be alive. What a gift to be alive. Amen? Some, our church, some of our church fathers, they were burned alive just for refusing to deny Christ. And now we have that freedom. We can worship anytime we want to. So what a great time to be alive. Even though things are not very nice, things are not beautiful out there, but it's a good time to be alive. True thanksgiving undergirds us for the future. Amen? The most remarkable of the recorded prayers of Jesus is his prayer before the tomb of Lazarus. A man dead four days. How many days? Four days. Lazarus is dead. And Jesus went to the Father in prayer. And he said, he started to thank God for what God, it's like he was, first, he prayed in the past tense. Amen? He prayed in the past tense. He said, I thank you, God, for what? was about to do. For, I thank you, God, for what you're about to do. And as though it was already an, an accomplished fact. Okay? So he prayed in the past tense. He said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Are you here? I thank you. It's like it's done. It's like something in the past. And he's praying when? When? Now. He's praying now, but his prayer starts with a past tense. I thank you for you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. I thank you because you've heard me in the past. And I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. What a prayer. Our faith can never be compared with Jesus' faith, right? We're not going there. But there's one thing we know. We have his promises. We have the promises of God. We, we can thank God for what we know that he will do. Even when we, don't, when we don't see it happening, but because we have his promises, we can thank God in advance. Amen? And that is another form of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, when we have a thankful heart that undergirds us for the future. I remember when I was sick, and I asked, from the nursing home, I asked for permission to come here and worship the Lord on, on, a give, on a Sunday. And that Saturday, I was on the phone with someone, and it, it was like he was warning me 
about coming to the church. Like you seek, you on a wheelchair. Why are you going to church for? Are you going to, to the church to show people how strong you are? That was his question. And I remember answering him, no, that's not what, why I'm going to church. I have to go to the church for the people that don't get a chance to see me on the wheelchair. When they see me walking, they will know that I'm serving a great God. That I'm serving a God that keeps his promises. I'm serving a God that's still in the business of performing miracles. And I did. I remember when they pushed me here on the wheelchair and I was here worshiping God. I was here blessing the Lord. You know why? For the things that he did in the past, for what he does in the present, and for what he will do in the future. And I, did not, I never saw myself on that wheelchair forever. I knew it was for a time. But in the Lord's time, I would stand up. I would be walking. I would be serving the Lord. Not only on a wheelchair, but on my two feet. Amen? And that's the spirit we need to adopt. A spirit of praise. A spirit of thanksgiving. Even when things are dark. Even when we don't see the, the sun shining, we know deep in our heart that it is shining. High above the clouds, that sun is shining and our Lord is good. Amen? Our stewardship of thanksgiving must be vocal. We should express it. We should say it. We should let people know about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. And the psalmist cried, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So if we are redeemed this morning, let's say so. If we believe in Jesus, let's say so. Let's thank God. Let's testify for his goodness. Let's testify for his love. Let's thank God because he has given us another day today. Some people did not get to wake up this morning. Here we are, all awake, looking good, worshiping the Lord. Things might not be the way we would want them to be, but they are not how they would be if it was not for the Lord. We need to thank God for this good life. Let's thank the Lord because he gives us the strength to keep going. Because sometimes you don't feel like going. But God gives us the strength to do so. So let's thank God for that. Let's be thankful for the beauty of the world. Isn't it beautiful? All the things that we're seeing, the, the, the whole universe. Let's be thankful for that. Let's be thankful that we're living in this land. We are living in this land. Let's be thankful. And unless you lived in another land, you would not understand what I'm talking about. But we need just thank the Lord because we heal. Let's be thankful for Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, our Savior, let's be thankful. Let's be thankful for our salvation. He has, he's the God. He's the Lord of our salvation. Let's be thankful for that. Let's give him thanks. You know why? Because his love endures forever. Amen. Let's give him thanks because his love endures forever. He is good. Our God is good. Our Jesus is good. And his mercy is everlasting. Do you want to thank God this morning? Do you want to say like David, Oh, my soul, bless the Lord. All that is in my inmost being, bless the Lord. Commend your heart to bless the Lord. Commend your soul to bless the Lord. Let not 
let the, the, that Thanksgiving week, the, the, that Thursday, be a day for us to eat turkey, to be with family, to have fun. But let's be thankful. Let's be really thankful. Let's be thankful, if anything else, for Jesus Christ. Let's be thankful for our salvation. Let's be thankful because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. May God bless you this morning.